I want to illustrate using counters and timers. Those are two of the most useful tools. Uh, let me just connect the dungeon back here a little bit and make a way for us to go back to the, the starting area. And to illustrate a counter, I'm just going to do a simple situation where a button has to be pressed three times to open a door. So let's make a dungeon door and it's wooden and we'll put it right there. So there's the door and we'll put a button on this wall next to it. Button, not the secret button, just the wall button. And that goes there. So there's the button. Uh, select the button. We can add connectors. We can make it only work once. Uh, we can rename it. I haven't been doing that, but let's go ahead and do this. Um, we'll call it triple button. Now the, the person playing the game won't know that you called it that. It's just for, for us working in the editor. So that helps us remember what we're going to do with it. But what we need to do is create a counter because we're going to link to that, not the door. So this counter, we'll put it nearby. I mean, you could put it way over here in the corner. It doesn't matter, but it makes sense to put it close by. And then we're going to set the initial value of the counter to 3. And what happens is when we push the buttons, it's going to make the counter go down to 2, then down to 1, then down to 0. And when it gets to 0, we'll have it open the door. So on the button, we'll have a connector and we'll click the counter. And what that does is it defaults to when you toggle the button, the counter will increment. It means it will count up one to four. But we don't want that. We want it to decrement down to two, from three down to two. You can have it reset. You can. There are other times when you want to reset the counter. But pushing the button and toggle is all you can do with a button. Um, you just click it and it toggles the button. So there's no other option. That will decrement the counter. And that's it. And then when we go to the counter, we want to connect that to the door and when it activates we're going to have it open the door and just like the other doors you can have it close the door or toggle the door you know whatever you want um, but we're going to have it open the door just as a one-time deal and it will stay open forever so let's try it click 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 and the door is open so you'd have some sort of clue in your dungeon that uh, you know you must hit the button thrice or you know whatever and then people will figure it out and they'll be able to get through here now when you click the button any more times nothing ever happens la 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 what's happening in the background is it's reducing that counter to lots of negative numbers but who cares the door's already open if you wanted to, to do other things and you might reset the counter and close the door so you have to do it again uh, but it just depends on how you want to set things up. Now let's use a timer and I'll just make another door and another button. We'll use a different kind of door. Let's use an iron door. Okay. Oops. Um, here I can hit Z to open the door. That's a shortcut in the editor. So there's an iron door. That's one of those special doors, huh? So we'll have a button on this wall and let's go ahead and make it a lever instead. We'll put a lever on the wall and we're going to link that lever to the door, but we're going to make a delay. So you think it's not working. What do I do? Uh, so we set a timer and we put the timer nearby and then we put the time on it and let's make it 10 seconds. So that's kind of long and takes a a while for you to exercise your patience for it to work and we're going to connect the timer to the door to open the door and we'll connect the lever to the timer to start the timer now once again there are other options with levers uh, unlike buttons they can be deactivated so when you activate it it pulls the lever down deactivating it is pushing the lever back up and any is whether it goes down or up it sends a signal so we'll leave it on activate and what that does is it activates the timer um, now what we should probably do here is have it be any and have it be toggle so what that'll do is somebody pulls down the lever 
and that activates the timer, but if they're not patient enough, they don't wait 10 seconds, and they put the lever back up, that'll toggle the timer again, turning it off. Uh, in order to solve the puzzle, they'll need to uh, activate the lever and wait, and then the timer will keep running without getting turned back off. So let's try it. Activate the lever. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, come on, where's the door? Open, open, there. It opened. Now, as you see, um, for these iron doors, they slide to the side, and so that looks really dumb. Uh, you'd want to have it set where that you won't see that. And then you can go in. Ta-da! Now, this doesn't matter anymore. The door's open forever. This does toggle the timer, but that's not something the player sees. It's just part of the what's under the hood. All right, now just for fun, I'm going to illustrate a little bit more about how timers work. I want to go ahead and move that door back in the hallway a little tiny bit, and I'll move this uh, over and the button. All right, so when I'm going to go back to the timer and change the interval back to one second, and I'm going to have it toggle the door. And what's going to happen is when you start this timer, every second it's going to toggle the door. Open, shut, open, shut. Every second it's going to do one more signal. <laughs> Let's just see what it looks like. Okay, so I toggled it. Open, shut, open, shut. So that door is busted. <laughs> okay, it's, it's something wrong with it. And uh, uh, we don't like what's going on, so you have to change the lever back and, and turn off the timer. Um, that could be an interesting puzzle. You have to time it so that it's open or shut and, and turn off at the right time. Okay, so now we can go in. Uh, but what happens when you start a timer, whatever time interval it's on, it's going to send a signal every second or every five seconds or every 0 0.1 seconds. So you could have something happening really fast over and over and over um, or toggling something back and forth. You can make a light be blinking on and off, um, whatever you want to set up. Or it could be something really long. Every 60 seconds, it opens a secret wall and then uh, 60 seconds later, it shuts it. So that would be more long term. Timers can be used for a wide variety of setups and combined with counters, they can be really powerful to create all kinds of puzzles uh, for what you want to accomplish.